So tip number two is something that anyone that's heard me speak before, I almost always mention SPAM, but I had to include that in here as, as a tip since it is one of the things that we use quite a bit to help our clients get more conversions. Um, I use a screenshot from Tom Waddington because I think it just really highlights why SPAM is an issue. And basically, like, imagine for a second that you are this fourth listing here. So you're not in the three pack, you're pushed out by the top three. But every listing that has orange writing, so basically everything but blue, is not a listing that should exist um, according to Google's guidelines. So, like, for the first office um, that's listed, it's actually a UPS store. Those aren't allowed on Google, so it shouldn't be in here. The second one is actually a lead generating company that is likely selling these leads to, you know, the real companies out there. I'll, I'll never forget a conversation I had with a guy a couple years ago. He was in water water damage and um, called me up, and he basically wasn't in the three-pack, but the top-ranking listing um, was a lead gen listing that he was buying leads from, and they were charging him $1,000 a lead. Here's a listing that shouldn't even be there because they're ranking, they're getting all this traffic, and then they are selling it back to legitimate listings um, who should be the ones there to begin with. So it's just something that people need to be aware of and know that there's definitely something you can do about it. Um, I use the hashtag stop crap on the map. You definitely use that on Twitter if you want to um, report spam or just, you know, have it show up. Um, there is people at Google that actually monitor that hashtag. Um, but the point being, if this is, you know, something that's impacting your business, you, you have to do something about it. Don't just let spam stay there. So where, you know, normal users would report something like this, uh, Google, my business has um, social profiles on both Twitter and Facebook. A lot of times people are afraid about reporting spam because they don't want to attach their name to, you know, a competitor and have that competitor come after them. So both of these options have private messaging. You don't have to publicly tweet, you know, that you're reporting a competitor. Um, so that's good. The only negative right now is that due to the overwhelming amount of messages they get, the response times aren't fantastic. So usually it takes about a week to even get a response at all. So that's not the greatest, but keep in mind, like once you do get a response, normally there's still several weeks normally after that before you'll see the listing, you know, Google take action on it. Um, my recommendation for people that are reporting stuff like this on Twitter is don't try to type, type it all into a tweet. It looks really messy and ugly and it's hard to track. I normally put together a Google Doc with, you know, evidence, right? Like, hey, by the way, this is a UPS store and you can see that by looking at the address on UPS's website, link to the site. Or, you know, Street View, like here's the um, link on Street View and you can see it's a UPS store, et cetera. So put together a well-organized Google document and just send the, the guys on Twitter a link to that instead of trying to put it all in a message. Um, I find that that, you know, translates better. They get the picture um, and I find it's just more organized, especially if you're like an agency that's sending several messages, you can start numbering them or labeling them so you have a clue on what they're responding to.